Hello again, this is Kyle. Let's write some code. Did you know your web browser can read files? No? Well, let's hope that I do, because that's what this video is about today. Now, you might already know about the input file tag. Uh, upon submitting, it will send uh, your file over to the server to do whatever server things do with it. But you can save a lot of server cycles by first processing the file on the client side first. So let's jump over into our code here, and we're going to select that input by saying document uh, query selector, spelled correctly. And we're gonna target the only input uh, type file on the page here. So now we wanna listen to when this input has changed. So we'll say add event listener, change. So when the person changes uh, and selects a file, uh, it's gonna call this event here. Now with the input file type, uh, when it changes, we can get the file that um, the person has selected or files uh, in sometimes multiple cases um, with the uh, files property off of the input. So we'll say console log input files. So now let's go select a file here. We will select one file and as you see, we get a file list, which is basically an array. It's an array like object of files. Um, and each of the file, the file type, is going to give you um, a little bit of information about the file that's selected, such as the name, the file size, what type it is, and a, a handle so you can read the file in the browser. So I wonder which browser API we can use to read files. Maybe the file reader API. Uh, so we'll say reader equals new file reader. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to read the file in a specific way. And there's lots of different ways you can read a file depending on what kind of file it is or what you want to do with it. Um, for like this example, we're just going to read a CSV file. So we really just want to read the file as text. So we can say reader.read as text. We'll call this function. And we'll specify the file handle that we want to read. And so we're just going to grab the first file. Um, you can have multiple files selected, but we're just going to grab the first file that the user has selected and read that file as text. So now when the reader has finished loading or finished reading that file, it will call this, uh, this callback here, this onload callback, and it will give us uh, the result of the file. So we can get that result off of the reader once um, the, the reader has finished reading and loaded. So we'll say reader.result to get the, the contents of that. So right now we'll just console log out this, the contents of this file and, uh, and give it a go here. So we'll refresh our page. We'll go here and we'll select a file. And as you can see, we get the contents of that file uh, logged out into our console. So this is a CSV file, as you can see here. And maybe you, you want to parse the CSV file. Um, so we'll say the lines and we'll get the reader result. And we're just going to split uh, by new lines here. And then we're just going to map each of these lines and uh, parse out them by commas. So we'll say return line. Split, we're gonna split by commas. So now when we console log out our lines, you can see we've built a really awful CSV parser. I don't recommend building your own CSV parser. It is a complete nightmare. Um, but you can see that it's really useful because you can start to process and do things with the file um, without having to send it to the server. CSV files are a lot of fun, but Let's pretend we're building an image uploading thing and we want to show like a preview of the image, but we don't want to waste the server time to, you know, size the, the thumbnail and, and manipulate the image when we can easily do this in the browser. So instead of reading text um, here as a, or a file, instead what we want to do is we want to use the reader and we want to read um, as a data URL. Um, so what this is going to do, we'll say the files input, we'll just specify the, the first file. So instead of reading this as the text, what this is going to do is it's going to base64 encode the file um, so we can use that string um, as an image uh, or, or you know, a representation of that image. And so now instead of uh, parsing um, horribly the CSV, we can instead create an image. So we'll say image equals new image. And the image source is going to equal the reader result. Or if I don't do that dyslexically, uh, reader result. And so since this is reading as a data uh, URL, what this source is going to be is a base64 encoded string. And so then now we can say document body and append this uh, image to our body. So now when we go and select a image file, 
you can see that it creates our image tag here, and you can see that it creates this base64 encoded string to display the image. But color images are not moody enough. What I really prefer is if this image was in black and white. And so what I'm going to do is here on the image, as soon as the image has loaded, and now this, this kind of seems weird because we're not actually loading an image from a server uh, remotely, but it still needs to call the image on load because it's going to take a while for the image tag to actually finish rendering and processing this image. And so you still need to do it on the on load. Um, so on load means that we have the image and it's ready to go. So if we want to manipulate this image, what we need to do is we need to create a canvas element. So we'll say create element canvas. Then with this canvas, if we want to draw to it, we need to get the context. So we'll say canvas, uh, get context, and we're going to get the 2D context here of that canvas. And now we can draw our image to the canvas by saying context draw image. And we specify the image that we want to draw. And the top left corner um, is where we want to start the image from. And so we're just going to draw our full image to this canvas context. Cool, so now that our image is in our canvas, we can start to read from that canvas the image data. So we'll say image data equals context, get image data. Um, we want to start at the top left corner, and then we want to read the full width and height of this canvas. So we'll just say canvas width and height, because we want to read all the data. And so then we'll just get the data off of this image data. And what this is going to be is uh, it's going to be all of the RGB values, um, RGBA values to be more specific of it. And so what we can do is we can loop through all of these. So we'll say uh, start at zero. And as long as I is less than the length of data, we are going to increment I by four because we have four values that we're each going to go. So we're, we're basically going through each pixel and we're figuring out whether the, the RGBA values for this. So if we want to turn this into black and white, what we need to do is we need to average out those red, green, and blue values. So what we'll do is we'll take the, the first value here and we'll plus it to the, um, so that's the red value, and we'll plus it to the uh, green value here. Um, and I'll just copy this. Um, and then we want the blue value, so we'll say plus two. And then we'll just take the average of those three colors. The next thing we want to do is we want to set the colors, the RGB values, to the average to remove the color. So we'll set the red, and then we'll set the blue, or the green, and then uh, we'll set the blue here to the average. So this will completely remove color from all of the uh, um, from our image that's drawn on the canvas. Then the last thing we need to do is now that we've modified this image data, we need to put this image data back into our canvas. So we'll say context put image data, and we'll take this image data that we've modified and start at the top left. And so now we have replaced the entire uh, canvas with this black and white image data. Cool, so instead of appending our image here, what instead we'll just append our, um, our canvas here to take a look at what it looks like. So now when we refresh the page and go ahead and load up this bear, you can see that we now have that same bear image, but now it's in black and white. All right, so pretend this is like some kind of image preview and there's another button on here that they can click to say, I'm happy with this moody black and white image and I'm ready to send it to your server to store it forever. Um, we unfortunately have um, our black and white image stuck in this canvas element. So how do we get it out of this canvas element and back into just a normal image or a file that we can put on the server? Um, and the canvas does have a function on it that says to data uh, URL here. Um, and this will give us that base, same base64 encoded string um, that we can set to an image tag. But, you know, we don't really want to send a base64 encoded string to our server and then have it do the additional processing to turn that back into a file. What we really just want to do is we want to send a file to our server. So it turns out this entire time that we've been using this input file uh, type, um, and the, the file type in the browser um, is a thing called a blob or a binary large object. Um, and blobs can be used to create files from scratch or from a canvas element. Uh, for instance, if say we wanted to create our own CSV file from scratch here, we can say new blob and we can specify uh, the, the contents of that file. So we can say like one uh, comma two comma three 
and this would be the contents of our file. And then we can specify the file type of it. So we can say text.csv. And we can perp and this is a this is a file. We can create a, a, use a form to actually submit this, and your server is going to see this as a CSV file. But lucky for us, uh, Canvas already has this built into it, so we can call Canvas to blob, and this will create a blob for us. And so we'll specify a callback here that when it has this this blob ready for us, we can then um, use it and to submit it in a form. Now, so now you're probably wondering, okay, well now we have our, our blob or our file really um, from our canvas and we want to submit this, uh, this file to our server. How do we go about doing that? Uh, well, we can use form data. So we'll create a form here. So let's say new form data. We're gonna create a form here. And what we wanna do is we wanna append a field to this form. This is kind of like appending an input tag into a form. Um, and so we're going to give this a name, and I'm just going to give it a generic name, image, that our server is going to expect. And I'm going to give it the, the blob um, file that it's going to send. And then I'm going to give it a, uh, an image name here. So I'll say this moody.jpg. Cool. So now that we have a form with an image uh, file uh, appended to it, we're ready to do the XHR request and send this to our server. So we need to create that XHR request. So we'll say const XHR request equals XML, HTTP, if I can spell this correctly, uh, request to create that request. And we are going to call XHR open. And we're going to do a post to the server. And the place that we're going to post to uh, is a fictitious server endpoint. So I'll just call it uh, image upload, such as that. Um, and so this is going to send our form to, um, to the server, uh, to this image upload uh, location. It could be wherever your server handles your image upload. And finally, what we want to do is we want to actually commit this. We, we want to send this request. So we'll say XHR send, and we'll provide this form that we have to send our image to the server. So as you can see, you can do a lot on the client side um, with files and, and images and things before sending them to the server. It's gonna really save your server a lot of cycles um, by offloading a lot of that to the client and individual clients um, uh, to do that kind of processing when you can. So now one last quick little thing in case you wanted to know how to read files, uh, the input file type is not the only way we can do it. We can Another way is if uh, we drag a file into the browser window. But right now all of this code is kind of tied to our input uh, tag. So bear with me here while I do a little bit of refactoring and uh, make this so it can be uh, handle the files in any way we want. Okay, great. Now we have a function that we can just pass it a list of files here. So instead of listening here on change, what we want to do is we want to know when a file has been dropped into the browser. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to add an event listener to the drag over event, uh, just because by default, the browser is going to handle a file in a particular way. So if I drag a file in here, you can see that it has completely just read this file and is displaying the file. So what we need to do is we need to tell the browser, you know, hey, it's okay, we're gonna handle this file. We're gonna, we're gonna do something with it, so uh, don't do that thing. Um, so what we're gonna do is on uh, drag over, we're gonna say prevent default here. And we're also gonna stop propagation just to be sure that nothing else uh, will try to handle that file. Then the other event we're gonna add is a drop event. So when they actually do drop the file, we can now read it. And so what we'll do is uh, we'll say we'll call handle files and we're going to specify we're going to give it the files that have been dropped onto the page. And so we can get that from the event um, data transfer uh, files. And this will be our list of files, the same list of files you would get from the uh, the input type uh, file there. Cool. So now let's go ahead and test it out by refreshing our page. And as you can see here, we can now drag a file into our web page. And what it will do is convert it to black and white, and then try to send that black and white image out to our server. We can also still continue to uh, choose the file with our uh, input element here, and it will do the same thing. Super cool. So I hope this has helped you learn about uh, reading files and kind of manipulating files on the client side and then sending them to the server. And if it has, then, you know, share the video with others and you'll learn all that same kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see uh, more videos, then uh, subscribe. Thanks again for watching.
Thank you.